Hey creeps, I hope you're doing well. My name is Cameron Cheney, author of Autumn Grow and welcome to Library Macabre. Now, last video was my library reorganization. I'll post the video link up here in case you missed it. In that video, I promised that a library tour was coming and that, that would be the last episode of this season of Library Macabre. It's still in the works. I'm still working on it. It's just a very big video. So I thought, while you guys are waiting, why not do a little to be read and to be watched video for Old School April, the readathon Old School April hosted by Kelsey from Slime and Slashers. Now there are a bunch of other hosts as well. I'm going to link Kelsey's video down below so you can get the scoop on all of the different hosts, all of the different prompts. It's a huge event. Now the thing is, I don't really do readathons. Uh, generally, I don't like them. Uh, I like to read at my own leisure, at my own pace. I like to read what I want to read and I don't want to be told what I need to read. But <laughs> Kelsey's readathon, Old School April, is an exception because what you read during April are all of the things that I love to read, all of the things that I would much rather be reading most of the time. You know, books that are over 20 years old books that are from my childhood, books that I grew up with. I read a ton of books last year and had so much fun, so I was eagerly looking forward to Old School April 2023, and now it's here, and I, we're in the middle of it, and I've already started reading, and I've already started watching movies. I want to talk about it because it's super exciting to me. I've got my laptop here, and I am looking at the prompts for the Old School April readathon. The first prompt is read a Goosebumps book or a book that fits the vibe slash theme of an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. I love Goosebumps. I love Are You Afraid of the Dark. These are things that were huge, huge, huge to me as a kid. I'm gonna be reading a Goosebumps book and I'm gonna be reading a classic Goosebumps book, one that I have not read in a very long time. In fact, it's the book that started it all. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab it. Here it is, folks. The one and only Welcome to Dead House, book one in the Goosebump series. I loved this one growing up. It really creeped me out as a kid. The episode did as well, the TV episode, which is way scarier than most of the other Goosebumps episodes. And I am very excited to finally revisit this. So yeah, Welcome to Dead House. This is the original edition, first edition actually, first print from 1992. Prompt number two, read any 80s horror book or 80s middle grade or YA book. Now I have tons of different options of what I could read for this because horror books take up half of this library and another half of this library is made up of mostly vintage young adult and middle grade books. So there's plenty to choose from. Uh, I have some ideas, so I'm gonna go grab one. I'll be right back. Now this one kind of hits both of the prompts because it is a vintage young adult horror book from the 80s and that is Ghost Abbey by Robert Westall. This is a point horror book published in I think it's like the early 1990s is when this edition is from, but it was originally published in hardcover in 1988. So this was technically released in the 80s. It's one that I've always wanted to read. I've owned this same copy since I was a little kid. In fact, this was passed on to me by one of my sisters. So this has been in my life forever, basically, since I was born. So uh, I would really like to get to this finally after all of these years and uh, dive in because I love the cover art. I love a good haunted house story. I've heard great things about Robert Westall and I am in love with point horror. Prompt number three, Free Willy. Read an animal attack story. I have one in mind that I've actually been wanting to read for a long while and it's actually a favorite of Kelsey's. I think it's one of her recommendations. And that is, let me go grab it. Hellhound by Ken Greenhall. So this book was originally published in, I believe, 1977. This is the new edition released by Valancourt as part of the paperbacks from Hell line. And this, of course, has an introduction by Grady Hendrix. I don't have the original edition of the book. I wish I did. Eventually, I'll find one. But for now, I do have this one here, which I picked up recently. And again, it's very short, which is a big reason why I picked this up because I want to be able to collect all of the points and medals for the readathon. So I'm trying to pick short books. That being said, I do have a couple of very long books in here as well. So we'll mix it up a little bit, but I'm trying to stick with short ones. Here we go. An animal attack book told from the perspective of the dog. 
And there's also a movie of this called Baxter that I would like to check out this month too, as long as I get a chance to get to this book. So, Hellhound. Prompt number four, old technology on the cover or in the story. Now this is one of those long books I was talking about. In fact, I think it's the longest on my list. So uh, that book is... <laughs> Tommy and the Order of Cosmic Champions by Anthony D. Great and Anthony J. Rapino. Now, I was sent this for a review at the end of last year. Tommy and the Order of Cosmic Champions is a newer book, but this uh, takes place in the 80s in Ohio, which is where I'm from. So it's definitely in my neck of the woods. So this should have a lot of things uh, that are very familiar to me. So this is a coming of age story that I've heard wonderful things about and I'm very much looking forward to finally digging into it. Prompt number five, vintage slash retro mood read. So I uh, had, again, a lot of uh, different options here uh, and I have decided on one. In fact, I already have it sitting over here because I started reading it a couple of months ago. <laughs> and that is a, kind of a cheesy romance from the 1980s. This is part of the Sweet Dreams series. It's called Secret Admirer by Deborah Spector. So this was published in 1985. And uh, this is a, a line of books that are all romance for teens. They all have these uh, really cheesy, fun covers. Some of the covers feature people who are very famous now, you know, modeling for these covers when they were kids, uh, which is a whole lot of fun. If you've not looked up the Jennifer Connelly romance book covers, I highly recommend you do. Courtney Cox is also on a couple of these. This one, I, I mean, just look at the cover. It's awesome. <laughs> you can't get more retro than this. So I started reading this a couple of months ago when I was sick and I just didn't get very far because I was sick <laughs> and I couldn't really focus on the book. So I read a chapter, I put it down, kind of forgot about it until recently. And I was like, you know what? I need to finish reading this. It would be cool to read this for Old School April. And another option for a uh, retro mood read would be the new Creep Show comic. So this is a, a newer comic based off of the you know, Stephen King, George Romero film and the Shudder uh, TV series. It's short, it should be quick to get to. Uh, and also I have to say, I love the way this feels. There's something about the texture of this cover that just, <laughs> it gives me goosebumps. I don't know. It's kind of like a matte finish, uh, but it's kind of like silky in a way. I don't know how to explain it, but it feels really good on my hands and I just wanted to nerd out about that. Prompt number six, read a Fear Street or Point Horror or Christopher Pike book. Now the Point Horror book I selected could also go with this prompt. I'm also a big fan of Fear Street, but I'm trying to save those for my Fear Street reading vlogs. So we're just gonna go with a Christopher Pike book, which I've already started reading. So I do have it right here. And that is Last Act by Christopher Pike. This is one of his very early books and I'm already halfway through. And this uh, basically is about a girl who is new at this high school. She's wanting to make friends. She decides to join the theater group and there's this play they're putting on and there's obviously something a little weird going on here. The kids are acting very strange as if they have a lot of secrets. Anyway, it's opening night of the play. She's the main character. Something goes wrong, she gets blamed. I'm just gonna leave it there. So far I'm enjoying this. It is kind of a slower paced Christopher Pike book, but I don't mind that so much. Witches, magical elements, cursed objects, etc. So this is a prompt uh, all around Teen Witch, which is one of my favorite movies ever. It's great. If you've not seen Teen Witch, you got to. And for this prompt, I'm planning on reading a Buffy the Vampire Slayer book. This is called In Every Generation. This is by Kendar Blake. This is a new book set in the Buffy universe. It follows Willow's daughter, who is you know, half witch, half slayer. So a witch slayer. It's got magical elements in it. I've been very, very, very hesitant to pick this up. Very on the fence about it, but I keep hearing good things. I've heard good things from Kelsey from Slam and Slashers. I've heard good things from Elizabeth Sagewood on her channel, and I do trust these people's opinions. I'm still very hesitant though, because I typically don't like newer young adult books, especially things taking place in uh, some of my favorite universes, such as Buffy. Uh, so it's kind of sacred. Uh, part of me wishes people wouldn't meddle in it, but also I do want more. So 
I'll give this a shot. I'll see what I think and I'll let you guys know. Next, read any 90s horror book or 90s middle grade or YA book. This is another one that I've already done. I've already completed it. Check. Give me my medal, please. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you really can win medals by doing this. I'm not just uh, being stupid. That's one of the things about this readathon that's so fun is that you're on a team. I'm on Blue Barracudas. You know, you have to fill out certain forms. Uh, when you've completed certain prompts, you get medals. And then at the end of it, you see who's team one. So it's just fun. It's good old fun. Uh, I already read this as part of the prompt. This is The Babysitter's Club number three, The Truth About Stacy by Anne M. Martin. I love Babysitter's Club. I'm trying to uh, read the books in order. So I'm on to book three. Finished it yesterday. Loved it. So there we go. Check. That prompt is done. And now we are on to the final prompt, which is female author slash woman protagonist. I have Nancy Drew in The Hidden Staircase here. This is book number two in the series. Again, I've already started this. I'm a little more than halfway through. I just recently read The, uh, the Hidden Staircase, the original text from 1930. This is the revised 1959 text. As a big Nancy Drew fan, I have been wanting to go back to the beginning and read and compare and contrast the original texts with the revised texts from the 50s. Like I said, recently read the original text of book two onto the revised version, so I'm gonna be finishing this up very soon. Now, those might be all of the prompts, but I do have uh, some other books here that I would really like to get to, and in some cases, have already started reading because I'm out of control. First off here, this is a uh, one that could kind of fit into the 80s horror book prompt. The Woods Are Dark by Richard Lehman. This was originally published in uh, 1981. Kind of a, a, a cannibal book. Uh, a couple of girls decide to go camping, get caught up in some uh, backwoods uh, cannibal business. Not very fun for them. A lot of fun for me. I am already a quarter of the way through and I just started reading this last night and I am loving it. It's insane. It's wild. It wastes no time. It gets right into the business. Very dark though and very disturbing and there are <laughs> a lot of messed up elements about this as is the case with all Richard Lehman books. And because I feel like I'm going to be in the Richard Lehman mood <laughs> coming up here, I might, might, might squeeze in the cellar by Richard Lehman. Another 80s horror novel is Mama by Ruby Jean Jensen. I've been in the mood to read some Ruby Jean, <laughs> so uh, this one would be a fun one to pick up if I'm able to. And because I can't get enough Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I thought if the other Buffy book disappoints me, I can go back to some of the original Buffy books that are based off of the show. So I actually uh, remember reading some of this when I was a kid. I don't really remember much about it, but I would like to dig into this one uh, if I have time. It's a little bit chunkier than most Buffy books, so I might not get to it, but I would like to. And here's one that I actually already started reading and I'm almost finished with. So this is uh, book one in the Monsterious series. This one's called Escape from Grimstone Manor by Matt McMahon. Now this is a new book, kind of in vein of Goosebumps. So it's got a little bit of a retro vibe. It's got some neon on the cover, which is a bonus prompt. So this was actually sent to me by Matt McMahon. He sent me a signed arc, which was really cool. Now I've talked all about books, but there's also a whole other angle to this readathon, and that is it's also a watchathon. And I have so many movies and TV shows that I would love to watch. And not only that, but I've already watched tons of things for this. I, I'm always watching stuff, you know, like when I get home from my job, I sit down on the couch, I start writing or doing videos, and I always have something playing on in the background. I've already gone through quite a bit, and uh, I'm gonna be talking about those, and I'm gonna be talking about uh, the other things I plan on watching this month. Now this doesn't count because I actually watched this last month. It was kind of uh, an appetizer, I guess, for the Watchathon. Um, so can't really count this, but you know, I wanted to talk about it still. And that's The Page Master, which is one of my favorite movies from when I was a kid. I love it so much. It stars Macaulay Culkin and uh, it also has Christopher Lloyd about a kid who's very afraid of everything. His dad sends him to the hardware store one day. He gets caught in a rainstorm. He takes refuge in the library, which is this giant, beautiful library in which Christopher Lloyd is the librarian. And then um, Macaulay Culkin's character gets swept up in this fantastical adventure. And it's wonderful. I love this movie. Uh, and it is just 
full of love for books. Can't count towards the watchathon because I watched it early, but uh, I still wanted to talk about it. Prompt number one, watch a Goosebumps episode. Easy. I watch Goosebumps episodes every month. Uh, so I chose Cry of the Cat. This is kind of in the mood. I haven't seen this one in a while and it's not a great episode, honestly, but it's really weird. It's definitely the craziest episode there is. The book is also pretty wild. Prompt two, watch any 80s horror movie. I have quite a bit here, but we're gonna start off with Uninvited, AKA Killer Cat. Uh, there's a little bit of a cat theme running through some of my, uh, some of my picks. I, that wasn't intended. It happened totally by accident. This is a Vinegar Syndrome release, and it is one of my favorites. It is one of the craziest movies. The killer cat in this movie is literally a killer cat inside of a regular normal cat. And basically, when this cat feels threatened, the killer cat comes out of his mouth and attacks people, and it basically looks like this little puppet. It's very cute. Some other 80s horror films I would like to get to. Critters. Critters 2. Uh, mostly Critters 2 because I consider this an Easter movie. It takes place at Easter time. I'd also like to watch Don't Panic. This is another Vinegar Syndrome release. Uh, it's basically Nightmare on Elm Street meets Evil Dead. And it's really fun and really cheesy. I watched this last year and loved it. And I would really like to watch it again. The main character in this wears dinosaur pajamas throughout most of the movie. And I don't know why, because the character is like 21. So <laughs> he just randomly runs around in dinosaur pajamas. It's very weird. And here's another one that's not actually an 80s horror film. I actually believe this was uh, from the 70s, but this is Martin by George Romero. I'm going to try to squeeze it in anyway, because it is old school. I just recently got this in the mail. and I'm super excited to watch it because I've been wanting to see this film for ages. It's kind of a horror comedy about a guy who thinks he's a vampire. I don't know if he really is or not. I have, I get the impression that he's actually not. I just got this 4K edition. It's this big, uh, beautiful box set from the UK. Uh, and I need to watch it because I hear great things about the film and I didn't buy this set uh, to never get to it. So I got to watch it this month. Next up, watch any Nickelodeon episode or movie. Just you wait. I have a whole stack of things here that I can watch, including ah, Real Monsters. I have the complete series here. I already fulfilled this prompt because I've already watched a couple episodes of this. I watched them yesterday or the night before. So I've already started digging into some ah, Real Monsters. I'd also really like to watch some Are You Afraid of the Dark? Of course. Mostly Tale of the Nightly Neighbors. That's one of my favorite episodes and I would really like to watch that this month. Some more options. Secret World of Alex Mack, The Adventures of Pete and Pete, Cat Dog, Hey Arnold, and of course, Rugrats. I recently started re-watching this show from the beginning and I am on to season three now. Next up is a retro vintage mood watch. And I have two different mood watches here. I already fulfilled one of them and that is Charmed. I've already watched a few episodes of Charmed this month. This is Charmed, the complete fifth season. I recently got the complete series and I've been watching it from the very beginning. And I'm about to finish up season five and move on to season six. I love Charmed. It's one of my favorite shows. Uh, it has been since I was a kid and it's been great to revisit the show in high definition. And I would like to watch some Eerie Indiana from my complete series box set here. Next, watch a Disney episode or original movie. I'm gonna dig into some So Weird. So Weird was one of my favorite Disney Channel shows from the late 90s. I haven't watched it in a long time, but it is on Disney Plus, so I'm gonna watch some of that. So Weird is basically like the X-Files for kids. It's really cool. Watch any 80s movie or TV episode. Have a couple different options. First off, Blades. This is another 80s horror film. It's basically Jaws set on a golf course, and the shark is actually a lawnmower. Uh, I've not watched this yet, but I am very excited to. I have to get to this, it sounds crazy. And then for the TV episode part of it, uh, I would like to watch some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the complete original series from the late 80s, early 90s. I've already dug into this, but I haven't watched any for April yet. So I still have to fulfill that prompt, but I'm gonna do it. Watch any 90s horror movie. I've already watched this one and we're gonna continue with our little cat theme here, our killer cat theme. This is Strays, a 1990, what is it, 1991 
TV horror film produced by Sean Cassidy, randomly enough. It's not good, but this is a very nostalgic movie for me. I originally saw this on a vacation to Kentucky to visit some family when I was a kid. It came on the Sci-Fi Channel. I thought it was Pet Cemetery. That's what I believe it to be because I hadn't seen Pet Cemetery yet. I thought I was watching Pet Cemetery. I got older. I watched Pet Cemetery when I was a teenager and I was like, this is not what I remember at all. <laughs> and then I found out, okay, that movie was not Pet Cemetery. It was Strays, <laughs> a TV film. So I watched this again and uh, I love it. It's not good. It's extremely cheesy. Um, kind of ridiculous in every way, but I love it. <laughs> I've already uh, watched this Blu-ray twice since I bought it, so that says something. Next, watch any 90s movie or TV episode, and I've already fulfilled this prompt as well, because I've already watched Matilda, my favorite movie of all time. Like, number one of any movie ever, Matilda. I have seen this movie literally probably 80 times. <laughs> not even exaggerating that. I used to watch this over and over and over and over and over. Ever since I was a teeny tiny little kid, I've never related so much to a movie before in my life. And I still relate to it to this day. And I still find new things in it that make me smile and make me cry. And I just think it's a really sweet, powerful, um, adorable movie. I've also already dug into some Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. This is the original series, obviously starring Melissa Joan Hart. I've been re-watching the show from the beginning with my new uh, complete series set here on DVD and I am on to season two. So I've already watched a couple episodes of this this month. A couple other things I would like to get to uh, that are uh, 90s themed. Monkey Trouble starring Thor Birch, <laughs> another one of my favorites from when I was a kid. Haven't seen it in a really long time though, so I would like to check this one out again as well as Courage the Cowardly Dog. I recently got the complete series of this on DVD. It's 90s, right? I think it I think it started in the late 90s, mostly early 2000s, but I, I do believe it started in 1998 or 1999. Oh my gosh, guys, I actually just wrapped up the video and I forgot to talk about uh, another movie I watched as part of like the 90s movie prompt and that is Fly Away Home. I've already watched it. I don't own it physically. I mean, I used to own a VHS copy that I, I had when I was a kid. I don't own that anymore, but I did stream it on Showtime and it's you know been a little while since I've watched Fly Away Home, but it was one of those movies that I loved growing up. It's a very beautiful film, uh, kind of a family drama, true story uh, about a girl played by Anna Paquin who is in a car accident with her mother. Her mother dies and she has to move in with her dad. Uh, so she's coming from New Zealand to Canada new country, new environment all the way around. Her dad has been absent from her life all of this time, so she's really having to start over. Of course, she's only 13 years old and she's very clearly depressed until there is a disruption in the forest beside her father's house and she finds some goose eggs that have been um, unnested. So she raises these geese into adulthood, but of course they need someone to show them how to fly uh, away for the winter and it's up to her and her dad and uh, her family to kind of teach them how. So there's the uh, saving the environment angle of the story, but it's also a very human story as well and focuses mostly on uh, the girl's relationship with her father. And it's so good and so touching and a very powerful movie. The opening of the film is incredibly sad uh, and it's always affected me since I was a really little kid. Uh, but it, it got to me even more this time around watching it. It's the final moments between uh, Anna Paquin's character and her mom as they're driving and the car accident happens and there's no dialogue. It's just um, the two of them laughing and uh, having a good time. Uh, and then over that is a song by Mary Chapin Carpenter called 10,000 Miles, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. A really beautiful song. Mary Chapin Carpenter is extremely underrated, in my opinion, has a beautiful voice, and this is one of her best songs. Uh, it's gorgeous and so sad. And then that song also plays at the end of the movie, and it's really good. <laughs> I could go on and on about this movie. I can't believe I forgot to talk about it. So anyway, I just wanted to say I also watched Fly Away Home from 1996 for the 90s movie prompt. So those are all of the prompts for the readathon and the watchathon. There are other prompts, bonus prompts, things that you can do while you read and watch movies. Um, you can build a fort, which I build forts all the time, actually. <laughs> I'm a big kid, guys. I really, really am. This isn't an act. 
It's not an act. Thank you, Kelsey, for coming up with this thing. It's brilliant. To my fellow Barracudas, we got this. We can do this. And I've got tons of stuff to read and watch. And I'm going to get as many medals as I possibly can. And I know you guys are going to do the same. And to all of you other teams out there, I'm going to kick your butt. Just you wait. We're coming for you. Not trying to intimidate you, but I am. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please don't forget to give me a like down below if you did enjoy this video and leave a comment. Of course, let me know what you think about these movies and these books. It's old school April, let loose, have a good time. <laughs> I will see you guys very soon in my library tour video. So until then, later creeps.